children's church council and we we want you to join us as we dedicate our heights in worship whatever you are whether in your sitting room in your bedroom at the place of work i just want you to join us as we worship the lord the creator of heaven and earth the one who has given you the spirit of life the one who has given you what to eat what to put on Many have kicked the bucket, but for your life and kicking, come on, join us as we worship him today. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, here we are today. We dedicate our lives unto you. We dedicate this moment into your hands. May you accept us all, our worship, as a burning sacrifice unto you. As we worship you, Lord. May you touch the sick person. May you reach unto the broken hearted and heal their wounds. May you meet that lady, meet that man, meet that child who is watching us live. As they are worshiping with us, Lord, bless them, give them with blessings. And may you make them a blessing that each and every one surrounding them will tap on the blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, John. Twebembere ruhanga Twebembere ruhanga ndonga Twebembere Lead us Lord be with us guide us protect us Lord Jesus Oh, no, 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 no. 
Jesus. You are Yahweh. You are Yahweh, Jesus. It's you that gives us the joy and the happiness. It is you, Lord. That's why we are here. That's why we are here. That's why we are here. Because you deserve it. You deserve it, Lord. You deserve it, Jesus. You deserve it. Praise the Lord. Um, I want to begin talking today uh, on something that I believe God has been speaking on my heart in a very strong way. But let me start by worshiping God. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you and we bless you, Lord. We give you praise, honor, and glory for the wonderful things that you have done in our lives. We thank you indeed for the gift of life of God. We give you praise as the King of Kings of God. You are the Lord of Lords of God. You are the righteous one of God. The judge of the living and the dead of God. You are Lord of the reigns of God. You reign in the heavens above, O God. You reign on the earth and under the earth, O God. And you reign in our hearts, O God. You reign in this congregation, O Lord, O God. So we give you praise, O God. We worship you, O God, as our God and our King, O God. We worship you as our deliverer, Lord of God. We worship you as our healer, Lord of God. We worship you as our counselor, Lord of God. As our comforter, as the God who sees us, Lord of God. Yes, you are Lord of God, knows where we are at this moment, O God. So we surrender our lives to you, O God. We surrender our hearts to you, O God. Speak to us, O God. Encourage us, O God. Strengthen us, O God. Fill us, O God, with your presence, O Lord of God. According to your power and your purpose, O Lord of God. Our hearts are yielded to you, O God. May you minister to us, O God, at our point of need, O God. Father, be glorified. Be lifted on my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, let's open our Bibles to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel, um, we will go to chapter 3. Ezekiel chapter 3 is where I get my heading for the teaching and for the preaching today. And we'll just read from verse 1. The Bible says, And he said to me, Son of man, eat what is before you. Eat this scroll, then go and speak to the people of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he gave me the scroll to eat. Then he said to me, Son of man, eat this scroll I'm giving you, and fill your stomach with it. So I ate it, and it tasted as sweet as honey in my mouth. Then he said to me, Son of man, go now to the people of Israel and speak my words to them. You have not been sent to a people of obscure speech and strange language, but to the people of Israel. Not to many peoples of obscure speech and strange language, whose words you cannot understand. Surely, if I had sent you to them, they would have listened to you. The people of Israel are not willing to listen to you because they are not willing to listen to me. For all the Israelites are hardened and obstinate. Verse 8 But I will make to you as unyielding and hardened as they are. I will make your forehead like the hardest stone, harder than flint. Do not be afraid of them or terrified of them. Though they are the rebellious people. So uh, I'll just repeat verse 8 because that's where my title of my heading sharing comes from. Verse 8 says, But I will make you as unyielding and hardened as they are. Now let's uh, move on 
much in the New Testament and in another scripture there in the book of Timothy, Second Timothy, chapter three, um, where Paul wrote to Timothy, Second Timothy, chapter three, from verse one. Uh, we we'll read up to verse five. It says that, but mark this: there will be terrible times in the last days. There will be various times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self control, brutal, not lovers of the good. Treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power. Now I like the way the New King James puts the next verse because it says, From such turn away. Uh, this one says, Have nothing to do with such people. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to be talking about the unyielding and hardened believer. Unyielding and hardened believer. And I want to talk about this in light of the current situation that we are going through. Uh, if there is one thing that I've brought uh, in this short film that I've brought, made in Uganda is that difficult times are upon us. Economically difficult times are upon us. In such a way that some people have been brought to the point of almost desperation because of the difficulties that we're going through. Now my conviction is that God will take us through and will come out of it. Praise the Lord. I don't know how God has to do this, but that's my conviction, and I move in that conviction. Praise the Lord. But I want to talk even broader, not just economic difficulties, but to bring out the fact that we live in hard times. The seasons that we have right now, and the seasons that come or fall upon men, are difficult seasons. There are times that the Bible has identified as perilous times or times of difficulty. Difficulty for the people of God. And that difficulty is created by a problem that the devil generates for particular generations. I was saying to the first service that we live in a time when evil has taken hold of the main street of the cities and has taken hold of the village alleys. In other words, the, you, you turn to the village, you see the works of Satan. You turn to the cities, you see the works of Satan. You turn on your television and you see Satan speaking to you. And you go on social media and it's all over the place. And you can easily come to the a, a point where you feel overwhelmed by the things that you look around. These are just a demonstration or a sign of the times. It's a sign to show that we live in very hard times. Now when I opened my Bible, I discovered that we are not the first people to live in such difficult times. We are not the only people who have endured an assault of the devil, where the devil not only assaults out there, but the, the, the assaults right within the church. In some congregations today, the devil is speaking from the pulpit and is ministering the doctrines of devils that the apostle Paul warned Timothy about. That is the influence of Satan. It is an influence that he seeks to take over and silence the word of the Lord. But I am here today to at least the people who agree within themselves that despite everything that the devil has done, we are going to be a hardened people who will stand for the truth and for the gospel in this generation. Hallelujah. I'm talking about being unyielding. 
am yielding. In other words, I am not going to bend and bend the wood. Something that cannot retreat, something that does not give up. The scripture says about God speaking to the prophet Ezekiel. He says, I am, am going to make your forehead as a hard as flint. Praise the Lord. I want you to touch your forehead and say, Jesus, Jesus. make my forehead hard. Backsliders is the book of Judges. In that book, 
they said that gave the Israelites the evil. I gave the Israelites. And the Bible, that book, if you read the very last verse, very, very last one, I think chapter 21, uh, verse 25, it says in those days, everyone did as they pleased. What seemed right in their own life. There was no leadership. Everyone did what was okay. What they considered okay, they went ahead and did it. In other words, it was a unique, strange generation where demons took over. Praise the Lord. And now when we come to what we're talking about in the time of Ezekiel, Ezekiel was, you know, by the time Ezekiel was prophesying, God had already inflicted punishment on Israel. They, they took them away to Babylon. But even under God's punishment, they continued to be a rebellious people. They continued to be disobedient. They continued to walk in their own ways. And so God began conversing with Ezekiel and said, for you as my prophet to be able to speak to this generation, I need to do something on your forehead. I need to harden you. I need change something about you. Now what does that tell me? It tells me that there are people of God who are not happy. Praise the Lord. Amen. I think Pastor Lama, I've never forgotten that sermon. I, I remember he wrote it down there and he used a word which I didn't know its meaning but he said that there are Christians that are yebe yebe. The yebe yebe Christians with the, who are just weak. They cannot confront anything. And I discovered that, yes, in every generation, we have people who have retired and have allowed whatever happens, let it happen. But in the days of Ezekiel, God saw it and he came to the prophet and he said, I need to do something different. Praise the Lord. Brethren, the times may be hard, the generations may be different, the devil may seek to do all kinds of things, but we have a God who does not know failure. We have a God who owns us. And we can walk with our heads held high and declare that victory is mine today. Not even tomorrow, but victory is mine today. Praise the Lord. We need a, a hardening of our hearts. When the Lord When the Satan comes and says, okay, let's lift up things that we let me, let the waves come and overwhelm, the Lord lifts up the standard, praise the Lord. And that is where we are. We are in a day when people are wondering, how do we survive this? How do we, what is all this? And that? Whatever it is, that God is on our side. Amen. And the victory belongs to us. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. No probably was the most thing. I must have struggled to obtain victory in his day. He must have, because he was a minority and it was like trying to say something to a sea of people who are all shouting one chorus. And yet despite that might be a minority, the Lord of hosts was behind him. Amen. But the same should happen to us. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I was reading this, this scripture we read in 2 Timothy. In two of Timothy's letters, 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, Paul did warn and say there is coming a time. In 1 in Timothy, I think chapter 4, it says the Spirit expressly is telling me. It is making it very, the Spirit of God has made it very clear to me that difficult times are coming. Men will abandon the truth that is taught, and they will begin to get teachers of their own kind. In other words, Paul was saying that different doctrines are coming. There will be people who will begin teaching things that are false, and they seek to lead people after their kind. Brethren, we are in that day today. We have today people who are teaching all kinds of things, and they are after them. New teachings that are grabbing 
They tell you how to love yourself. And when we love us of themselves, they will be boastful, they will be arrogant, they will disobey their parents, they will love God, I mean the world and not God. I believe we all know that. We are in that day today. But from such people, turn away. Now I like the language of the King James because when, when we talk about this, they say, when, when you live in a community like this, the influence of the world always tries to spill over to the church. And you find that if the world is speaking a certain language, and the world is saying certain things and doing certain things, eventually you begin to hear those things even in the house of God. And so it's like we are all moving through a certain stream. But Paul is saying when you realize that, when you notice that such things are happening, you need to put a stop and then turn. From such turn away, from such wickedness turn away. And sometimes some of that acceptable way may even be in the house of God. Some of those seemingly acceptable manners or what is considered to be okay. Remember, Paul says they have a form of religion. They have a form of godliness, but they only go up to some point. And Paul is saying, for such people, turn away. Praise the Lord. Amen. I am here today to enlist people who desire to be unyielding and difficult to the ways of this world. Amen. Some versions of the Bible says it's stubborn. People who go the extra mile to be different in order to allow God work in their lives. You know one of the things I realize is great things that happen in Bible times and even in our day, none of them happen powerfully in the lives of people who are average. There is always an element of madness that has to come upon the individual to say even though the entire everybody is going in this direction for me I'm turning away because I see a problem there. Praise the Lord. And that is the message that God gave Timothy and that was the message that God was delivering to Ezekiel. It is one and the same in every generation. And right now, in the church that we have in Uganda, we need God in our ministry. Amen. We need the Spirit of God. We need the truth of the gospel. We need the fire of God. We need the people who are devoted and totally surrendered for the cause of the gospel. Praise the Lord. Because distractions have become too many. Seemingly exciting things have become too many. And everybody seems to always be having something different. But God, I believe, has a plan for each and every one of us. Praise the Lord. So how did God speak to the prophet? And to understand the life, by the way, the, the situation that Ezekiel was in, we need to read go back to the book of Ezekiel and read the previous chapter. Ezekiel chapter 2 um, give, gives a description of how the life was difficult those days. In Ezekiel chapter 2 the scripture says he said to me son of man stand up on your feet and I will speak to you. As he spoke the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. He said, Son of man, I am sending you to the Israelites, to a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me. They and their ancestors have been in revolt against me to this very day. The people to whom I am sending you are obstinate and stubborn. Say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. And whether they listen or fail to listen, for 
for their rebellious people, they will know that the prophet has been among them. And you, son of man, do not be afraid of them or their words. Do not be afraid, though briars and thorns are all around you and you live among scorpions. Do not be afraid of what they say or be terrified by them. Though they are a rebellious people, you must speak my words to them, whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious. Praise the Lord. You see the situation to the extent that from two occasions in that portion of scripture, God tells Ezekiel, do not be afraid of their words. Have you ever been afraid of certain words? There are people who can, who can intimidate with the words that they speak. There are people who are hardened to the point that they can actually make you shy away from the call that God has given you. But this is the situation that God painted in the days of Ezekiel. There were people for whom God was, even God was not sure, are they going to listen or they are not going to listen? But God assured the, the prophet that whether they listen or they don't listen, for me, I have hardened you. I want you to do the ministry. Praise the Lord. But the thing I love the Lord about this is that God had to work in the life of Ezekiel for Ezekiel to be a minister to that generation. And I believe if we allow God to work in us, we can stand in this generation and say, come rain or sunshine, we are the children of God in this generation and we will minister the oracles of God to this generation. Hallelujah! That is what God has called us to. So when you read them in this chapter 2, I was asking myself, how did God harden Ezekiel's face? And it's right there in the scripture. Because he says in verse 1, chapter 2, that he said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet. When I read that, something just jumped within me. God told Ezekiel, stand up on your feet. Meaning the prophet was either lying down or seated, but the Lord said, it is time to stand. Brethren, as a child, it is time to stand. Amen. For too long, we have allowed the devil to do whatever he's doing, and we keep crying, oh, do you know what happened? Oh, do you know what happened? But it is time for the men and women of God to stand. The prophet had to stand because the time had come to confront the works of the evil one. Praise the Lord. Amen. This generation cannot defeat us. All the demons in hell cannot defeat us. Whatever the devil does in the church and outside the church, in our families and outside our families, can never defeat us. Praise the Lord. The prophet, God said, stand up. You know what happens when you do nothing and just like, there are people who are, I think for a long time, we have allowed a message of comfort to be preached in our ministry. A comfort that has taken us to sleep. A comfort that has made us know oh, all is well. All is well. All is well. Everything is okay. I once had a minister with a preacher that at least made the message was always all is well. Anything that is all is well. All is well. All is well. Until one time I was preaching in the church and I told him, but really, even when things are not well, all is well. But, <laughs> but, but the point is that, yes, in Christ all is well, fine. But what we need to understand is that the enemy is not sleeping when the church chooses to sit down. Yes. When the church chooses to sleep, the enemy is at work. And so God had to tell the prophet, you need to stand up. It is time for action. Praise the Lord. Listen to what the scripture says. So one thing is we need to stand up. Immediately after that, the prophet said, 
of his head. He said to the son of man, stand up on your feet and I will speak to you. I learned that we cannot overcome without the word of God. If God does not speak and if we do not hear the voice of God, we cannot overcome. Whether it's personal struggles, whether it's struggles as a child, whether it's struggles as a nation, we need the guidance of the word of the Lord. And the prophet had to hear the voice of the Lord. And when he heard the voice of the Lord, a hardness came up upon him. In other words, you can only minister with what has been given to you. You cannot give what you do not have. Amen. You have to have a message from heaven that you can be able to deliver. If we are going to be ministered to this generation, we need the voice and the message from heaven. Praise the Lord. Amen. The, the word of the Lord to the prophet, he says, I will speak to you. Stand on your feet and I will speak. In other words, as I was reading and I said, God, you mean you will not speak to the prophet while he was lying down? And that's it. He had to speak in order for, I mean, he had to stand up in order for God to speak. If he had disobeyed the initial commandment, God would not have spoken. It is people who are standing at attention that God, have, have declared to God that their hearts are ready and they want to move forward. Those are the ones God speaks. But if you are contented and so full of yourself and you are inclining, maybe God has no word for you. Praise the Lord. So the prophet had, I mean, God spoke. And listen to what the scripture says. And he spoke, as he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet. And I heard him speaking to me. Praise the Lord. I read that scripture and I just something started up in my spirit that this is the secret to a hardening the forehead. The secret to a hardening from the Lord is number one, we need to stand up from our lazy, lying position. Number two, we need to position ourselves to hear the word from the Lord. And once we have heard from the Lord, we will be ready for ministry. And the Bible says here that the Spirit of the Lord, as, as, as he was hearing the word, the Spirit of the Lord came. Praise the Lord. I spoke in the first service and I said that the days must return when the church becomes obsessed once again with the Spirit of God. When I got saved, the obsession back then was are you spirit filled? And people used to torment me and I mean literally torment me if I got an experience with the Holy Spirit. The, the first thing they would be asking, are you spirit filled? And it would be very confrontational. Yes, your God, are you spirit filled? Do you speak in tongues? And, and it would offend me sometimes. I say, but what is this? But I did realize after being filled with the Holy Spirit that after they had the reason and the point as to why they needed to make this happen to me, praise the Lord. Brethren, the part or the place of the Holy Spirit in the church in the recent times has been vacant. There has been an emphasis on the material world. Emphasis on prosperity now. Emphasis on I don't know why. But the place of the Holy Spirit has been left vacant. But the hour has come for us to return to that old-fashioned gospel. The hour has come for us to return to true experiencing the Pentecostal manifestation. Yes. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, the Spirit of God does, it changes everything. Listen, when, when the Spirit of God came, the Bible says, and He spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me. Praise the Lord. The Spirit of God will lift us to dimensions that 
that you have not experienced. It is the Holy Spirit. Forget about the trickery of men. You know, in recent times, you have found and devised cunning ways of bringing people to the church, of making congregations grow. We buy all the sophisticated machinery. We have our mass choirs. We do all those things. And really, the human spirit gets excited about them. Today's church is more interesting than in the, ch the church of the previous generation. And I mean, I mean more interesting in that it's more entertaining. Not necessarily that it's more spiritual. But what we need Thank God for the, for the instruments. Thank God for the big choirs. What we need is the Spirit of God at the same time. Amen. The Spirit of God breathing upon us. Yes. I am always encouraged that Genesis 2 7 is a very exciting scripture. It says that when God made Adam, He made him out of clay. And then after He had made the clay, He breathed him into His nostrils. And he became a living being. I, I love that scripture. The dead soil became a living being. Amen. A dead child becomes a living being with the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. A vaccinated believer becomes a living 